We now will have a keynote lecture of the conference by Dr. K. Thangraz, Honorable Director of CDFD. Before joining CDFD, he was the Chief Scientist and Group Leader at the CCMB Hyderabad. He was the President of Indian Society of Genetics from, human, uh, from 2011 to 2015, and also the founder of the Society for Mitochondrial Research and Medicine. Today, he will be enlightening all of us on the topic titled, Multifaceted Analysis Diverse Novel Genes for Human Male Fertility. With this note, I welcome Dr. K. Tangaraj to kindly deliver the keynote lecture. Thank you very much, sir. It's over to you. Thank you very much. So good morning to all of you. I must thank uh, Dr. Umapadi and uh, Dr. Suresh for organizing this meeting and asking me to give a talk. More than that, I'm really happy that because I'm meeting my former teachers, colleagues, friends, and students. <laughs> so without taking much time, I'm going to talk to you about the genetic aspects of male infertility, which we have been doing for nearly two and a half decades. If you talk about infertility, it may not be a real problem in, in some sense in India, because we have a population of uh, 140 crores and the increasing size of 1.18 percent, that's a general trend of uh, the population size in India. But this will not compensate the family where they don't have children, right? So there's a real problem of uh, male infertility or infertility in general. And if you look at uh, the UN World Fertility Report, of course, this is a little older, and the average children, or average number of children per woman was uh, six, about 50, 60 years back, and it has come down to 2.5. And people can think whether it's really because of infertility or because of uh, various measures taken by uh, government or the family itself. But looking at the infertility center, in major cities, even the small towns, every corner, and that tells that real story of uh, infertility. And if you talk about infertility, there are about 15 percent of the couples are infertile due to various reasons. Of that 15 percent, 50 percent are male and 50 percent female, there is no difference, it's equal contribution. I am going to talk about the 50 percent of 50 percent of the 15 percent, that is a male infertility and the reason for male infertility is various reasons, including medical and clinical, environment, lifestyle and so on. So, we will not go into detail. If you talk about the genetic aspects of male infertility, there are several reasons. One is the chromosomal abnormality, any kind of chromosomal abnormality will lead to infertility, micro and macro deletions on the Y chromosome, mutations in the X chromosomal genes mutation in the autosomal genes, mutation even in the mitochondrial genes which are inherited maternally can cause the infertility or male infertility. All of this leads to abnormal salmon for five, most of you are aware, azoospermia, oligozoospermia, asinozoospermia, teratozoospermia and there are some combination of oligo, aseno and teratozoospermia that means low number of sperm count, low motility and abnormal shape and size. So, one of the important reason for that is 
is the Y chromosome deletions. If you look at the Y chromosome, there are three Azus permic factor regions called as Azus permic factor region A, B and C and there are several genes that are responsible for spermatogenesis. And the Y chromosome is known for full of repetitive sequence of course, the half of the Y chromosome is heterochromatin in nature and even this region you find lot more repetitive sequence that helps in the combination and deleting some of this uh, region. Our earlier study on looking at the Y chromosome micro deletion, we found there are very minimal micro deletion on azospermic factor A, average in azospermic factor B and in azospermic factor C region there is a huge deletion. Sometimes there is a combination of azospermic factor B and C deleting several mega base region on the Y chromosome. After that, we could find very small frequency of reason for Y chromosome micro deletion. Then we went on to do looking at the deleted azospermia region or it is called as DAS in general. In the azospermic factor C region, there are four copies of DAS 1, 2, 3 and 4 and in this particular place you can see this lot of uh, sequence they are existing in palindrome okay, in a different orientation same uh, set of sequence. For example, B 1 is in different orientation compared to B 2, B 3 and B 4 are again different orientation. Again these are uh, this helps in recombining and deleting this entire region. For example, between B 2 and B 4 could delete the entire uh, DAS region. So, we systematically evaluated using several STS markers present in this region and try to understand how the deletions are. So, these are different deletion events and of course, we further confirmed that by southern hybridization sometimes PCR may work or may not work and this shows that there is a deletion of azospermic uh, del deleted azospermia region A uh, 1, 4, 3 and sometimes combination of uh, many of them. <coughs> then we try to look at the X chromosome genes based on the report existing elsewhere and this study on Singapore population shows that there is an antigen receptor gene which is on the X chromosome which in which they found the mutations. Similarly, here this is a study from Brazil they found mutation in exon 1 and 4, but we did not find in any of our azospermic sample azospermic are combination of uh, infertile samples, but rather we found in another set of sample that are sex reversals which primarily worked by Rajendra Singh for his PhD and found the androgen receptor gene as mutation in such case there are several families at least 8 families we found mutation in androgen receptor gene. There is also study again in Singapore population and here in Italy suggesting that there is a CAG repeat in the antigen receptor gene in exon 1 if that is expanded beyond normal size that is associated with infertility. Even the Italian sample showed, but once again when we looked at it we did we did not find any association with the CAG repeat expansion rather slightly is less. On the other hand we also looked at because it is antigen receptor gene, we looked at some of the criminals who involved in uh, both uh, sexual abu abuse and also uh, several other and they showed significantly lesser 
antigen uh, the uh, CIG repeat on the antigen receptor gene. <coughs> so, I am not going to show that then we went on to look at some of the genes autosomal genes which are involved in as a part of spermigenesis. genesis. In the spermigenesis, genesis there are several important activities takes place. <coughs> the stones are replaced by the uh, protamines there are several steps involved in that uh, there are several genes involved in this process that is a ubiquitin conjugating enzyme 2 is involved here in chromatin remodeling then there is a replacement of uh, stone by transition nuclear protein which are there then does it again removed and the protamines are tightly packed in the fully matured sperm only we find 15 percent of the sperm carrying the nucleosome structure whereas 85 percent of the sperm carrying very highly compact nucleoprotamine complexes. So, we thought of looking at all of these genes and we found several novel variations. We always find not only in this disease, we also work on uh, cardiomyopathy, various um, cardiovascular diseases, neuromuscular diseases and so on. So, we always find most of the Indian samples carrying mutation those are not been reported elsewhere. Again here novel mutation in calcium binding calmodulin dependent protein kinase 4, then there is a transition nuclear protein there are two copies of that 1 and 2 that is associated with male uh, infertility again not going in detail for those. We also looked at some of the other genes including estrogen receptor B. Once again you can see there is a large number of novel mutations in uh, infertile individuals. As I mentioned earlier even the maternally transmitted mitochondrial DNA also associated with uh, infertility particularly in case of oligo astenozoospermia because astenozoospermia are the low motile sperm uh, in the sperm the mid piece of the sperm we find the mitochondria as you know that mitochondria is the power of the cell if there is a mutation in, in the uh, mitochondrial DNA we correlate that affecting the motility of the sperm. Then put together so what we found so far is that uh, Y chromosome microdeletion is responsible for 11.5 percent, percent of the well characterized male infertile individuals and uh, de deleted azoospermia 5.5 percent, mutation in the autosomal gene 3.6 percent and mutation in the mitochondrial DNA 5.2 percent all of them put together at least we have answer of one fourth of the infertile men is due to uh, these uh, abnormalities. Then we thought because three fourth we do not have any clue and what we need to do. So, we thought of looking at the exome and uh, this is Sudhakar's work which uh, he will present uh, tomorrow in very detail about sample and other things, but I wanted to highlight what we have done in this study. We sequenced 47 uh, azoospermia individual particularly non attractive and we replicated the SNPs which we found. Uh, that is about 40 variants in 33 genes using 844 infertile men and 709 this number may vary now uh, fertile men and uh, you can see we have collaboration with uh, various uh, uh, collaborators. So, what we found was there are two different kind of variants one is the rare variants where we found 11 genes or uh, 10 genes are showing this and of these 5 of them are novel uh, variants and in case of associated variants there are 10 genes of that 3 of them are novel genes so far no one reported and altogether 
eight genes which are not known so far to be associated with male infertility. Of these, we thought of characterizing some of them and uh, the first one which we characterized, characterized is the centrin 1 and the centrin 1 is a calcium binding protein and initially we found a mutation uh, which uh, cross metonin to threonine and later on we sequence thousand and odd infertile men and uh, equal number of fertile men to understand is there any other mutation in the entire gene. Initially we found only one, then that gave us one more mutation in 5 prime UTR and you can see the p value is significantly uh, high. Then we went on to characterize both mutation and this is uh, uh, the 5 prime UTR mutation. So, where we have did the luciferase assay, it is a promoter alone, wild type and mutant. Here, what we see is the mutant shows very high uh, luciferase activity. Later on, we found by bisulfide uh, sequencing, and this mutation, particularly as inhibiting the uh, methylation psi, uh, methylation, therefore the activity is very high in the mutant. Sometimes over expression also is a problem. Then we went on to characterize because this protein was not characterized with the help of one of our colleague Dr. Yoginda Sharma. We isolated the protein and uh, characterized. So, the entire part I am not going to talk, but I am going to talk about how the mutation has impacted. Uh, probably associated with infertility and we looked at the secondary structure, this is a wild type and this mutant with calcium and without calcium and same way with calcium and without calcium, you can see there is a slight difference in the secondary structure, but not in the treasury structure. And in the ANS fluorescent again you can see this is a wild type sentin and this is with the mutant, there is a shift and also it affects the increase the uh, hydrophobicity only in the mutant. Then we went on to characterize at cell biology level how the mutation actually impacted. Then we found that uh, this is a, uh, a wild type on 3, 4 different stage where you see clearly the centrins 2 spot and uh, it went you can go through and see that there is a perfect a cell division. But in case of the mutant, what we see here is a wild type and the, there is a multipolar cell here in the metaphase and the anaphase again you can see there is a anaphase bridging and the telophase uh, bridging and ultimately it affects the cell division. So, what it shows is that there is a mutation in the centrin gene and it give rise to multipolar cell. Therefore, this arrest of cell division and of course, we have done that in the uh, mitosis not in the meiosis, but we expect that it would be the same and therefore, this arrest of uh, cell division leading to um, azospermia. Then we went on to, to support that, we looked carefully again with the help of uh, Dr. Anuranjan from JNC. We looked at in the interface, you can see two centrosome and the centriole numbers are very high in case of the mutant. Same way, once again you can see this is a wild type and the mutant, the centriole numbers are very high and the graph shows that this is a control wild type and the uh, cells with the, the mutant very, very significant uh, difference. We also looked at the cilia size and uh, this graph shows that this is a control and centrin and you can see that the in the, in the mutant 
the cilia size uh, is increasing and of course, in the electron microscope you can see the multiple or uh, multiple centrosome and the overall structure of the cilia is not been uh, affected. So, all of this telling that the sentin mutation single base mutation leading to abnormal cell division and arresting the meiosis. And of course, this was published very recently in uh, human molecular genetics. Then we wanted to characterize other gene that is a X chromosome gene and this is a work of uh, Umesh which I am going to tell very briefly that uh, there are couple of mutations in the centrin uh, sorry in the um, tex 13 b this is a X chromosome gene and is exclusively expressed in the testes. And uh, with the help of Professor Pradeep kindly he gave us uh, GC1 cell line and Umesh has done the knockout using CRISPR Cas with the standard method and there was about 500 base pair deletion and went on to characterize um, with the help of uh, Chandrasekhar my one of our colleagues in CCMB. And here the initial stage shows that it is affecting the cell proliferation. This is the GC1 and this is a knockout and this graph shows GC1 and knockout there is a significant uh, difference. Then we also did the proteome I am not telling the entire story I am just uh, highlighting the important one again with the help of Swiss C in uh, CCMB and there are two different uh, aspect one is the proteins that are down regulated which are all associated with mitochondrial uh, function and the, the protein which are up regulated are in the glycolytic uh, pathway. As you see here these are the set of protein you can see respiratory chain the oxfos and many more all are the, the mitochondrial complexes almost all the complexes are as associated with this and uh, these are all in the glycolytic pathway. Now, if you look at this exclusively the one which are uh, involved in the, uh, the mitochondrial uh, activities these are some of the genes where you see that they are all express uh, down regulated and the one uh, which are down regulated are associated with uh, re reduced mitochondrial number we used uh, the mito tracker red this is a gc1 as such and these are two different clones as you see the mitochondrial numbers are significantly uh, reduced. Then we also looked at the respiratory aspects of mitochondria as a whole using respirometry or oxfos and you can again see that the control ones are fine and here you can see there is a significant reduction in the activities. Now, this is the glycolytic proteins again you can see the control the activities of uh, uh, the, the, the these two proteins are over uh, expressed. Then we do not have actually a clue how because the tex 13 coming to mitochondria and how actually it is leading to uh, germ cell development or infertility uh, finally. Then we found a paper in PNAs they showed that uh, this is a PGC male female and that is the early undifferentiated the PC, PGC the mitochondria they found that distinct requirement of energy metabolism in mouse primordial germ cell and there we program into embryonic germ cell. So, this actually giving a clue. So, we may have to take it further and this is the kind of model which we have proposed. So, mitochondria expose activities at certain B where this is uh, uh, the 
over expressed and uh, here this uh, uh, the function is affected and the knockout cell the transcriptional activation of nuclear encoded oxford gene is altered due to absence of or partial absence of x 13 b. Uh, as a result the nuclear encoded oxford proteins are down regulated in x 13 b knockout cell which leads to upregulation of glycolytic enzyme in the feedback mechanism this is just kind of the proposed hypothesis. So, with uh, this what I am concluding is that uh, this study identified novel genes and mutations which are responsible for additional 12 percent of uh, male infertility and of course, that adds additional list of genes which are involved in male infertility. And uh, one of the important aspect is that whenever there is a Y chromosome microdeletion or any mutation the genes which are responsible for sperm, uh, sperm production there is always failure of infertility that we came to know through our clinical collaborator if there is a Y chromosome microdeletion even multiple attempt of uh, artificial uh, uh, technique for infertility it fails. Therefore, what we believe is that some of the genes which we found needs to be screened even before they take up the uh, ART uh, for uh, to solving infertility problem. And the mitochondrial link of to the infertility with the text 13 B is coming to some shape and functional characterization of other genes are in pro process may be sometime later I would be able to tell you. But this has very very societal implications because societal implication is that when talk about infertility in general in the society particularly if you go to the rural society and they, the mother in law always blame the daughter in law for being infertile. But without knowing that the son would have contributed 50 percent of general cases not only that because now we are looking at the mitochondrial genes, we are looking at the autosomal genes. The mother or mother in law herself would have transmitted that mutation to her son because of that uh, there is a infertility in the family. So, I will tell you in two conditions. One is I showed you this the androgen receptor gene mutation leading to x y female or sex reversals. In fact, that mutation is on the X chromosome that is present in the mother, she has the mutation the heterozygous conditions on the X chromosome that is passing on to the next generation. All the males of course will receive and the female also will receive alternatively the normal or the abnormal ones. Now, you look at she is absolutely fine fertile and this gene this mutation has been transmitted here, she is again carrying the mutation she is fertile and transmitting to the next generation. Whereas, three of her daughters or may son uh, genetically they are all infertile due to carrying that mutation x y. So, only one x chromosome which has come from the mother carrying the mutation same way here same way here. Luckily, uh, one individual uh, uh, received the normal chromosome therefore, is absolutely fine. So, at least two generation we have seen that the females are fertile transmitting the gene to the next generation. I think similar situation what we have seen majority of them uh, are with the heterozygous condition okay, in the autosome. Therefore, it must have come from the mother if father was carrying that he would have been also infertile. But sometime we also seen because the infertility is multigenic and there is no well defined that if this mutation is there even oligospermic can be fertile. In one case there was a oligo asino teratozoospermic individual was fertile of course, that is a different story, but he wanted to confirm whether he is a real father of the child, but we did that earlier and found that despite of having low sperm count, low motility, abnormality, the shape and size was fertile. So, 
such possible so in that scenario so in this case parents are heterozygous and the two children were homozygous at the disease and unfortunately they died at very very early age just just giving a clue that in some case both the parents would have contributed very rarely we found the homozygous condition uh, so with this i would like to thank all of those who have um, contributed to the study as i mentioned sudhakar umesh and many more um, rajender is here uh, pradeep also here and uh, some of them um, probably i must have missed and thank you very much for uh, listening to me. thank you very much sir for for your informative and insightful talk and thank you very much for being with us today and your grace the event now i would like to request professor bj rao to kindly come on to the stage to present a moment to dr k tangral director of cdfd as a token of honor and gratitude thank you huh? <laughs> thank you very much sir Good for doing the honor <laughs> thank you so much thank you very much i'll i'll get you there there are a few announcements i would like to request to everyone to kindly stand up on their positions to take a gold group photograph followed by I request all the dignitaries and participants please gather at the CCMB car parking area to inaugurate the stalls by Dr Vinay Kumar Nandikuri director of CCMB and Professor B J Rao honorable vice chancellor of University of Hyderabad later everyone can join for high tea at the near CCMB car parking area and reassemble here right back within a 30 minute to avoid delay the session we have one more announcement i request all the speakers of session 1 to kindly hand over their ppt to pendra in pendrive to the organizers to avoid delay the session now i request everybody to stand up on their position for good photograph <laughs> 